It's not every Acadian that passively resisted uh, the deportation and accepted it with quiet resignation as, as uh, the stereotype has often been presented. There were some, they were a minority, yes, but there were nevertheless some for whom uh, this exercise was completely uh, unbearable and they preferred uh, taking refuge in the woods, living with the, the uh, native people of the area and actively resisting all the incursions that the British soldiers would later uh, inflict upon them. It was uh, under the, the, the leadership of a Joseph Brossard that was nicknamed Beau Soleil. Broussard du Beau Soleil was a very uh, hard-headed and stubborn Acadian. Uh, we know this of him because he was implicated in uh, a few trials uh, during the British regime in Nova Scotia. He spent uh, many years with Mi'kmaq warriors attacking some British uh, garrison. He was protected by well-connected Acadian uncles and cousins who dealt sort of on a daily basis with the British officials, but they never trusted uh, Beau Soleil. Uh, Beau Soleil was known to have fights with uh, Acadian men. He was accused of being the father of, uh, of a child out of wedlock. Beausoleil Broussard was the leader of the Acadian resistance, but in the end, facing the imminent starvation of his family, even he was obliged to lay down his arms and surrender. Beausoleil spent the remainder of the war a prisoner of the British. Locked in the cargo holds of the prison ships, there was no sanitation, no sunlight, not even room to move. Many of the exiles would die of hunger and disease before they ever saw land. The Acadians were scattered throughout the American colonies, from Massachusetts to Georgia. But wherever they went, it was always the same. They were unwelcome aliens hated for their French language, their Catholic faith, and their refusal to be absorbed by the Anglo-American culture. When the Acadians were uh, deported, the idea of Charles Lawrence was to uh, disperse these people in uh, little pockets of uh, society so that there could be a people who are called Acadians, or who are considered Acadians, but they had mal compris la profondeur de ce sens d'identité qui avait commencé à cause du fait que c'était des gens qui se connaissaient déjà avant de partir, même de la France. Donc, quand ils ont essayé de les disperser euh, pour, pour briser la société, rendu là, en 1755, c'était impossible. Euh, le, le sens d'identité était déjà trop fort. Nearly 1,000 exiles were sent to Maryland. Within a few years, their number had dwindled by as much as a third. Their kinsmen in Virginia faced even greater trials. These exiles uh, contracted smallpox, one of the two great scourges of the 18th century, a disease they hadn't encountered in predispersal Acadia. Uh, so as a consequence, when they arrived in Virginia, the colonial government refused to allow them to debark. Um, they remained aboard the ship in quarantine, and the disease just decimated the, the ranks of the exiles. It was eventually decided by the government that they should be shipped elsewhere because they would never be given entry because of the, the epidemic. So the ships were ordered to sail for England. And during the passage, two of the ships sank. Uh, the survivors made their way to England at British seaports where they were placed in detention centers. Those who did survive were sent by the British to French, uh, French seaports in 1763. During the exile, the dislocation and loss of life was so great that the Acadian population of both the Canadian Maritimes and Louisiana combined is but a small fraction of the seven million demographers estimate it would be today had the Grand Derangement, the deportation, never occurred. The Acadians had a remarkable communications network during the exile. Um, at the height of the dispersal, there were Acadians living in France, there were Acadians uh, in the Falkland Islands, Acadians in uh, the northern 
coast of uh, South America in the West Indies, scattered along the eastern seaboard in Quebec. Um, the fact of the matter, though, was that the Acadians were able to communicate with one another. Each of these communities managed somehow to communicate with relatives elsewhere in the world. Acadians began arriving in Louisiana from the British colonies, especially Maryland and Pennsylvania. Nearly a generation later, the largest group, the Acadian exiles in France, immigrated as a community. The Spanish government in Louisiana provided each Acadian family with land, tools, seeds to plant, and a musket. The settlers began building farms and cattle ranches, and within a few years they had achieved the quality of life comparable to the one that they had left behind in Acadie. Beausoleil Broussard had led his people to this fertile grassland in the spring of 1765. That autumn, he was laid to rest. But he had lived to witness the founding of a new settlement, a new homeland, and the birth of a new Acadie.